Hello my soccer universe. Well, due to my vacation I have to cover now three rounds of Serie A action. I mean, uh, in any way it was like wall to wall to wall to wall to wall until Sunday evening. I needed all Monday to catch up and yeah, here we are trying to do it. Uh, the good news is I have not watched all that many highlights so there you go. Maybe it will not be the 30 minute video that I'm expecting this to be. Um, I guess I will not spoil anything when I say yes Juventus won the league again and therefore I am wearing Juventus although they did not win win all their three games but I think with them winning the league it is the only way to go. Let's start with round 34 where actually I that was still ahead of my vacation I saw actually quite some stuff. Um, Hellas against Atalanta kind of the pupil against the master Juric, um, Hellas Verona coach, worked for under uh, Gasparini before. I have to say, I was really looking forward to, 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 to the game. Um, did not quite live up. Surely Atalanta was the slightly better team, but Hellas really gave them a challenge. And it took Atalanta a long time to get uh, going. They get the breakthrough in the 50th through Zapata. And I thought, I was thinking, yeah. Put on some pressure. We need this Atalanta win to uh, keep the title race alive. No, Pessina shortly thereafter in 59th equalizes. Atalanta cannot find the breakthrough. Um, similar story for the other fun team to watch in Italy this season, Sassuolo against Cagliari. Yes, they play nice. They uh, they scored through Caputo in the 12th uh, early, early on. And it really seems like uh, Sassuolo will get another win, which at this point would not have really suited me all that well because I felt that Sassuolo can really challenge Milan for this final Europa League spot. Um, then Cagliari goes a man down. I'm thinking, yeah, Sassuolo will go. And you know, there's nothing against Sassuolo. Yes, Milan, I want Milan uh, to play European uh, foot football like next season. But I think Sassuolo is one of the more fun teams to watch uh, to the point where I'm actually already looking. Yeah, should I get a Sassuolo shirt? Maybe. Maybe. I'm just afraid once I get it. Uh, they will then go down, but uh, they are a really fun team to watch. However, Cagliari gets an equalist, lies us through Joao Pedro and even has a few chances. It, it kind of petered out and again, overall I think Sassuolo didn't convert the chances to go anywhere through. And then Milan-Bologna. Uh, that, I'm not saying this came out of nowhere, but how Milan dominated the Bologna team that, remember, won against Inter and had actually a good run of results. They completely did this, destroyed Bologna. Uh, Salemakas gets his first uh, goal. Chalanoglu get, get, gets another goal. Then when Tomiyasu pulls from back, and I think there was a, a short shot period where Bologna maybe was threatening for an equalizer, but then Banas, Benacer gets his first goal. Was it day of first? I think even Tomiyasu got, got, got his first goal. Uh, the game is done and dusted by the 49th minute. Rebic adds one on, and then um, Calabria also getting his first goal of the season late on. It was fluent, it was fun. Milan, uh, one of the two teams to watch uh, since the restart. And I am for once happy because I remember even when they got the results last season, uh, it was not always that fun because I always felt slow. Now they finally, it looks like they're playing some modern style soccer. So uh, I'm very happy, happy that great 5-1 win uh, for Milan. Uh, Parma, I think, was 2-0 up against Sampdoria and manages to lose. And Sampdoria uh, also was a pretty good team uh, going into this season. Um, Parma in the first half had even a goal to this last, so this would have been... 3-3 uh, three, three, if that would have stood. Um, Brescia Spal, uh, kind of bottom dwell dwell. Brescia wins that one, Fiorentina Torino. Then the big one, uh, Genoa against Lecce. Um, that was the big one in the relegation battle where Lecce needed a result. Unfortunately, they didn't get it. Lecce gets a result against the big teams, not against the small teams. The winner, a uh, fluky goal where it goes off the post on the back of the goalkeeper and in. Uh, yeah. Uh, I have to say I'm a little bit gutted because I think Lecce is a much more fun team to watch than Genoa. I saw Napoli against Udine uh, a little bit. Um, yeah, I thought for the, for, for, for the longest of time that Udine uh, will hang on to the draw and then in the last minute, really nice, uh, stoppage time, the really nice goal by Politano to give uh, Napoli the win. I know 
Napoli is not the opponent for, for, for Milan, but you know, it's nice to leapfrog Napoli, but at that point, this was not the case. And then uh, the, the last two games, I mean, Roma Inter was an entertaining game uh, with De Vrij getting kind of the lead a little bit against the run of play, but then Inter was the better team. A little bit later on, Spinazzola, uh, then Roma turns around, Spinazzola gets the equalizer. And Mkhitaryan actually puts Roma into the lead. And it was really low, looking like Roma will hang on, on to that one. Because uh, they played quite well and Inter really needed a while to get back into it. But then uh, a really freak penalty. Was it Spinazzola or was it um, Perotti? Where he cannot control the ball, then wants to... Slam, slam it away and hits. Was it Lautaro? I, you know, this is now over, over, over a week ago. Hits the uh, the inter attacker, and it's a penalty. And this was the most slapstick penalty I've ever seen. Lukaku converts and makes it two two. Now, uh, Atalanta one one doesn't put really pressure on Juventus. Inter playing only a 2-2 doesn't really play, uh, put pressure on Juventus. So everyone is looking at Lazio to do something. And Lazio was quite well in that game. Uh, it ends nil-nil. I think um, each team hits the post. However, then uh, Juve gets a penalty, justifiably. So Ronaldo steps up, makes one goal. And then a few minutes later, they press uh, with the two, two, two together with the Dybala, get the ball can run the two of them alone to on to goal. Dybala puts it to Ronaldo and makes it 2-0 uh, for Juve, which is kind of this dangerous lead for Juve because 2-0 two, two is they like to give up. Uh, but this time they hang on, but Immobile gets a penalty uh, goal in the 83rd. Um, Juve actually, actually think played relatively well there, but Lazio gave them a challenge. And I think it was probably one of the better Lazio performances since the restart. Lazio cannot find the equalizer at all, uh, which probably would have kept the title race in balance. With that win, Juve was on the edge of winning the championship, but more crucially for uh, Cristiano, uh, he and Immobile were both at 30 goals each, but tons of penalty pal goals, which, uh, you know, many penalties given this. So, um, as I said, Juve, eight points clear with four uh, rounds to go. Seemed at that point a foregone conclusion that you will win. They just needed one more win. Uh, Inter staying ahead of Ad Ad Atalanta and Lazio within epsilon of still within epsilon of qualifying for the Champions League since uh, Roma drop points. Milan still behind Napoli. Although I think they probably would have won the head to head if there was a away goal rule. Uh, a little bit flip flopping down, and I think the big one was that Genoa has now a four point cushion over. Lecce and therefore Lecce looks like set to be uh, out uh, and for the Europa League spot uh, Sassuolo with a long wait way to go this is eight points probably not gonna make it midweek round and now this was him uh, At Atalanta gets a messy win against Bologna um, uh, in the first game back then Milan against Sassuolo another rather impressive performance um, they just didn't sc uh, score as much. But Jalanoglu assists Ibrahimovic very nicely. Um, and they had more chances to uh, to pile on to uh, Sassuolo. But then um, a rather stupid penalty is given to them. Uh, you know, I think a handball. One of one of those. This is the hand handball rule. Um, is so eagerly taken. I mean, as soon as the uh, ball hits the arm, it's a penalty. I do personally not like that. That causes the inflation of penalties in Italy. Uh, so Caputo equalized, but uh, right, coming back, John Nogles is Ibrahimovic for his second. And then Burabia gets sent off, which allows Milan to actually coast a home. Should have maybe scored. Right now. Bono Ventura uh, having twice the chance to get the ball past Consigli, but uh, twice Consigli stepping up. So yeah, it ends 2-1 for Milan, which I thought was a big win, and Slatan getting on, on the score. He was not happy against Bologna by taking off in the 60th, where he definitely wanted to score because he felt there are goals in, in there, so he, he gets two goals. Uh, Parma gets a rather a curious win against Napoli. Napoli having uh, more of the game most, most of the time, but it was a penalty game. Uh, all three goals scored through penalties. Uh, Caprari getting a hands pen penalty, a weird one. Uh, Insigne also, and then uh, the last one was probably the most um, 
uh, Contagion Kulusevsky just fall falling away. I don't think that uh, Kul Kulibala did much there. However, he cannot overturn it, although Kul Kulibala was hopeful in the 87th. Kul Kulusevsky just when Napoli was pressing for the winner gets the uh, winning goal on the front from the penalty spot. Inter uh, dr uh, nil nil against Fiorentina, dropping points again. And at that point, it was clear that the title challenge to Juve for by Inter is definitely over. Lecce's win against Brescia would have counted a lot if Sampdoria would have stepped up in the derby. No, they did not. Um, it was an even first half from all that I, I, I could get with um, Crescito getting the first goal for uh, through a penalty for Genoa. I think this was also a, a little bit... It seemed very weird to me that this was given a penalty. I didn't see, really see the foul there. But then uh, Gabbiadini gets the equalizer for San Sampdoria. Um, Lera Gea's goal is uh, then called uh, offside in stoppage time. And Genoa is then a little bit over, over, over a bit in the second half, but again, uh, it's Lera Gea. It was a nice move over Jarg Yellow um, with some sloppy defending by. Um, by some 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 doing Lerge gets his goal says celebrates by saying var you won't take away this one and I think it was a huge win for Genoa because uh, that was confirming we had the win all over Lecce Lecce won against Brescia now um, we have the four for four points and we're looking rather safe Hellas uh, cannot back up uh, gets only one one against Torino uh, Roma six one over Spal that was a statement uh, there that definitely with Zaniolo scoring a goal where he starts in his midfield and then you know plows through uh, it was more it was more force than uh, skill on that one for sure and then the huge result, uh, Juve could have, and I actually saw a little bit on vacation of that, of, of that one in, in, in the restaurant. Uh, Juve could have clinched the title with a win over Udine, given the other results. And duly they took the lead um, uh, through the Licht. Yeah, wide range shot. Uh, had some chance. I think they were all over the better team in, in, in the first half. But uh, Udine gave them a final and Nestorovsky equalizes. Then Juve is pressing for the winner. They want to win the championship and late in the game they get caught on the counter by Fofana. Udine winning 2-1 against Juve. That came out of totally nowhere. So the title party is a little bit postponed. Lazio getting a late win against, um, again, a late, a late win, a turn around against Cagliari. Um, where Simeone gave them uh, just before the half the lead. Milinkovic Savic, wonderful uh, volley, volley strike, e equalizer and Mi I Immobile not hitting the ball right, puts the ball into the net. And at that point, Immobile has 31 goals and is ahead of Cristiano. So, with that mid, we ground Juve still on the edge. But still very much uh, winning this title. Um, Atalanta going ahead of Inter for, uh, for for now and Milan finally going ahead of Napoli. Uh, you see Napoli in the group really got their one the Coco Coco by Dari, so for Milan it doesn't uh, count anything. They needed to catch Roma. Uh, Parma and Fiorentina are mo moving up a lot of moving uh, movement uh, in, in, in mid-table on the bottom. Uh, things looking worse for Lecce. Then the big one, the other big, big one, probably the two best teams meeting in the San Siro between Milan and Atalanta. And what a game it actually was, especially in the first half. Atalanta initially having a bit, bit, bit more the initiative, but Milan gets um, a free kick that Cialanoglu wonderfully converts from an acute angle. Uh, for me, the goal of the season for Milan. At least the one. Guy. I mean, it was a really, it was one of those wow moments. Uh, absolutely great goal by uh, Chala 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 Noglu. Um, Milan then on the front foot, but um, Bilia steps uh, in the box on Mal Mal Malinowski's uh, inner knee, and Malinowski steps up to take the penalty, and Donnarumma saves it. Huge goal. However, uh, Atalanta will get the equalizer because Zapata, Milan twice seemed to have cleared, cleared but it bounces back to Zapata and uh, he can pull it into net 1-1. Um, I think Atalanta hit once the post, but in the second, second half is most, mostly Milan who, who was taken with it. I think Benazer hit, hit, hitting the outside against, um, again, uh, not against, 
again, uh, Paul Maturo miss, missing chances. I think Milan were, were the better team, although Atalanta had some chances to get the winner too. But it ends 1 1, and you know, that's kind of, kind of too hard. I wanted Milan to win that one, of course for their own but Atalanta not winning also a little bit hurt because that meant title challenge over basically Parma 2-1 over uh, Brescia Inter getting a rather easy win over Genoa uh, but yeah Lecce losing 3-2 to Bologna however another storyline on the weekend was Napoli uh, against Sassuolo where Sassuolo scored four goals and all four are taken away by offside and I think everyone was was correct but it must be so frustrating if you're uh, a Sassuolo player led let, let alone a Sassuolo fan uh, Napoli took the early to Husa and then it's really uh, and the offset was not like that the scorer was offset, it was in the build of the offside, uh, which is really uh, galling and annoying. Uh, 32nd, 37th, 49th, and 61st all wiped out. And then in stoppage time, uh, Alan scores the 2 0 for Napoli. Uh, Roma Fiorentina. Fiorentina gave, gave, gave Roma quite the challenge, but. Um, the longer the game went on, they took the lead through a two penalty penalty. Milenkovic equalized for Fiorentina. Fiorentina really wanted to hold out for the draw, so they st uh, stuck deep. And then uh, Roma was too strong. Roma playing in the new uh, jer jer jerseys. I see a lot of love coming for this. I'm not so sold, to be honest, uh, so far, but let's see. Uh, it was right on the 80th where I think they hit the post. Uh, then there was a double, triple chance that resulted in the goalkeeper making a great save just to charge on the on, on ball where Jacob was coming and a little bit clumsy challenge. Yeah, it's a penalty where the two con converts. I would have personally. And Roma is my second favorite team. And this is exactly where you want to, you know, Milan is my favorite, favorite team. So uh, Roma drawing would have been great for getting this fifth spot especially considering the roma's final few games but yeah um it was an overall deserved win and so i can live with it and roma has also been have, have, having a little bit of slow slow stuff and uh have having also um getting much much better um udine one nil at Cagliari, one one spal torino lazio uh despite going down one nil uh to verona then taking Verona apart. Am Amrabat gets the goal, then through a penalty, then another penalty given for Immobile, deep into stop stoppage time. Then Milinkovic, Savic and Correa again, uh, Tuntun has goals before Immobile gets the pick of the bunch. Wonderfully taken shot um, to make it, uh, I think, 4-1. And later on, he gets another penalty, 5-1, to increase the tally. Um, I think at this moment, we have 34 goals for Immobile. I mean... If for Italians, that's a huge, 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 huge uh, goal tally. But again, many, many penalties in there. So Cristiano definitely wanted to get a few. Uh, but Sampdoria was a pesky opponent uh, for, for them. Uh, and Sampdoria really playing well. But, you know, this week they didn't get all the re results. They lost the derby. Now they had to play Juve. Um, took them... They had chances, and if they converted a little bit like, like last day, if they would, would have converted, they would have uh, probably taken points off Juve. But no, it was not, not, not to be after Pianchi sees Ronaldo deep in stoppage time, makes it 1 0, and Bernadeschi uh, later makes it uh, 2 0. In the 67, I think it was his first goal, kind of late, and then Thorsby gets sent, sent off. Ronaldo could have made 32 goals on the season. No, he misses a penalty. Uh, I think it hits the bar. He wanted to yank it home. No, was not to be. However, short-lived. Juve win the championship. Uh, big celebrations. It's Sarri's first title. For that reason, I'm actually not too unhappy that Juve won the championship because I think Sarri is a coach that deserves it. However, what he did with Juve this season, I think he didn't have to squat for his style of play. It was pretty uh, fun, 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 fun. I said, you guys must be a really good bunch if you can win, win with me as a coach. Saying that. So the current table now is, you. it's basically all decided at, at this point. Juve uh, is first. There is a battle for second place between Inter and Atalanta. We'll see the schedule, which I think favors probably a little bit Atalanta. Lazio is also in the Champions League now uh, fixed. Roma um, looks 
and they will need one one win and they have secured their fifth spot milan uh, is in sixth is also fixed in their europa league as is napoli sassuolo will not get in there the all the flip-flopping in the mid table is not that important genoa really looks still with four four points if lecce needed uh, needed to get some 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 something at bologna it looks really full for lecce which is a little bit sad from my point of view because i really liked Le lecce i also want to have a few more southern teams but there are two come, coming up um i think benevento and crotone are, com are, 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 are coming up so we're getting a little bit more balance in the league again uh i think it was last season where there was i think Cagliari was the most southern team which you know I like it geographically spread out, for sure. Uh, let's look at the upcoming games. Uh, we have already tonight Inter Napoli. Inter has, has a pretty tough uh, remaining program. That's, I think, a pretty big game. Uh, probably want to watch that one. Uh, for, for sure, Sampdoria. Milan uh, looks like an interest, interesting one. Um, Torino Roma is also one that, uh, because for this last Europa League spot, that will be interesting. So these are kind of the last things. Who will finish fifth and sixth and uh, who will finish second? I don't think that Lazio will have to say, although they have a relatively easy game against Brescia. So those are the games, I think, uh, mid midweek and then on the last round, still everything at the same time. It might, uh, all South substitutes change. Milan uh, with a relatively easy game against Cagliari and Juve is playing Roma. So I don't know. Roma probably could get something off Juve, but uh, this is this is the one hope. And then the big one, Atalanta against Inter, um, that probably will be for second place. Um, and I don't know whether it's important for Atalanta to finish second or for Inter. But that, I think, is a pretty interesting game to finish off the season, as is Napoli-Lazio. Um, not for a table, but I think that's a pretty nice game to finish it out. And then let's finish this video in Port Portugal. And no, Benfica did not become champions. It's my only Liga Nostra jersey. And it's my oh, the oldest jersey in my, my collection. The Juve jersey I was just wearing is just a tad younger. So two of my oldest jerseys in one video makes for a great showing. Um, I owe you the relegation uh, results. Um, you know, every, every, everything from Monday. We had the other games already in my La Liga roundup. Um, Tondela with a pretty huge win over Braga, uh, which kind of secured their survival a little bit. Porto, um, uh, yeah, and, and um, Ferreira winning against Porto, Porto Manense was also a rather important result in that one. Porto winning 6-1 over Morerense, there was a wonder goal with a, a double uh, back heel uh, assi uh, assist. Just, wa just watch it, it's a great. Uh, Seto Bal also gets an important point against Sporting, uh, whereas Benfica wins 4-0. Um, and then in the last round, so at this point, Porto Manens is last. And they would need uh, either to um, Seto Bal or um, Tondela to lose. But all of them down are winning. We see it on the, on the bottom. Tondela wins 2-1 against Mare Range. Porto Manens wins against Last Place Aves, which they thought is their joker. Not really. Setubal wins against Belenenges, so uh, meaning the Portimonense actually go, goes down, which was not. When I followed the restart, Portimonense never, never looked like they're, they're going down. Uh, the big result, Benfica winning the Derby against Sporting. I think this rounds out a horrible season for Benfica. Um, they were uh, the awesome favorites to win the league, and then uh, all went downhill. Braga wins against Porto and with those two results combined we have now the following that Braga actually gets the um, fixed Europa League spot sporting and Rio Ava have to play in uh, qualifying family cow does not get in uh, although they have always, always been around the top, top five uh, during the season and as I said Porto Manense go down well this ends this roundup video um, I think the next Serie A roundup you will get um, next Monday when the season is over and yeah i hope you enjoyed this video drop a comment below uh, about the games if you see something different or even similar uh, than i did give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video subscribe to my channel if you want to see more and i will talk to you soon bye hey there i hope you enjoyed this video and if you did here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too 
also please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye.